Hey guys, it's Phoebe, and today we're going to look at the third dot point in maintaining a balance. Today we're going to explain why the maintenance of a constant internal environment is important for optimal metabolic efficiency. Okay, that is a bit of a mouthful, but the topic honestly isn't that bad. Most of it, anyway. Before we start, we need to understand what optimal metabolic efficiency is. Optimal metabolic efficiency is when our body cells are working like a well-oiled machine in producing energy and removing toxins. You look good, you feel great, the weather is nice, and the chemical reactions and pathways in your body are working at 100% efficiency. The catch is that this only happens when enzyme function is at its best. Except for the weather part, that's just luck of the draw. If you've been paying attention, hopefully you'll remember that enzymes work best under certain conditions, such as temperatures, pH levels, and substrate concentration. If you can't, you'd better start cramming, because we're going in deep on this one. Firstly, let's talk temperature. Every enzyme has a different optimal temperature, and as you can see on this graph, the blue dot shows where the optimal temperature for this random enzyme is. Optimal temperature means optimal enzyme activity, until the temperature gets colder or hotter. That's when everything starts working less efficiently. When the temperature is lower, the rate of a reaction is slowed down. But when the temperature is too high, the bonds holding the enzyme together break, the active site to lose shape, and the enzyme falls apart. This explains the sudden drop-off on the right side of the graph, and this is known as a denatured enzyme. As you can probably imagine, an enzyme that's fallen apart is as, as useful as a screen door on a submarine and it will no longer catalyze the reaction it was supposed to. Something similar also happens if the temperature gets extremely low, except that the bonds don't break and enzyme activity will occur at speeds that a snail could beat. Putting it simply, too cold equals bad and too hot equals really bad. Now, let's move on to substrate concentration. Just a quick refresher. A substrate is the piece that fits into an enzyme's active site, or that bite-sized chunk shown on the slide. Now, let's move on to substrate concentration. Just a quick refresher. A substrate is that piece that fits into an enzyme's active site, or that bite-sized chunk shown on the slide. Using bigger and less interesting words, a substrate is the molecule in which an enzyme works upon. Just a heads up, substrate concentration works a bit differently to temperature. If you have a look at the graph, you'll notice that instead of the optimal enzyme activity being represented by a dot, it is actually a line. This means that once the substrate concentration reaches a certain point, the optimal enzyme activity will stop increasing. The first point at which the optimal enzyme activity is reached is known as the point of saturation. At this point, enzyme activity has already peaked and no amount of additional substrates you throw at it will increase it. To use an example, let's say that the point of saturation of an enzyme is 10 substrate units. Regardless of if you increase the substrate concentration to 100 or 1000 at this point, the enzyme activity will remain the same because there is only a finite number of enzymes and enzymes can only catalyze a number of reactions one at a time. Of course, you could go the other way by decreasing the number of substrates, which will lower enzyme activity but that's just crazy talk. Now, let's move on to our final topic, pH levels. As you can see, the pH graph is similar to the temperature graph. Well, good news for you is that it works the same way. Top of the graph means optimal pH level, which means optimal enzyme activity. If the pH drops, it becomes more acidic and enzyme activity decreases. If the pH increases, it becomes more basic and enzyme activity also decreases. Don't get too used to stuff being this easy. After going through all of that, you'll probably realize by now that it is important to maintain a constant internal environment, particularly temperature levels, pH levels, and substrate concentration levels, in order to allow enzymes to work efficiently. Therefore, constant internal environments result in efficient enzyme activity, which results in optimal metabolic efficiency. This is why our body temperature is always at a range of 37 degrees Celsius. That temperature is the perfect balance 
as it's warm enough to prevent nasty fungal infections, but cold enough so that we don't have to eat food 24-7 to stay alive. To use some scientific terms because it sounds better, any hotter or any colder would change enzyme activity and reduce metabolic efficiency. And we're done. See, that wasn't so bad now, was it? Before I let you go, let's quickly recap everything we've covered today. 1. Optimal metabolic efficiency is when our bodies are efficiently producing energy for the body and removing toxins from the body. 2. All enzymes work best under certain conditions. A. For temperature and pH levels, the optimal enzyme activity point is reached at a specific temperature point or pH level. B. For substrate concentration, once the saturation point is reached, enzyme activity won't increase any further. 3. When these conditions deviate, enzyme activity is compromised. A. If the temperature or pH level increases beyond or decreases below the optimal enzyme activity point, enzyme activity will decrease. B. For substrate concentration, once the saturation point is reached, enzyme activity won't increase any further regardless if you increased the substrate concentration. Anything less than the saturation point, an enzyme activity will be lower than the optimal point. And that's it. We've reached the finish line. In the next video tutorial, we will look at the process of maintaining a constant internal environment and how our bodies do so.